Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 31 Soul Stone Not to mention the powerless survivors, even Chen He and Liangpeng had changes in their expressions when they saw the debris of different sizes scattered everywhere. The entire place looked as if several bombs had blown up the foundations of nearby buildings and demolished them in the process. What? What happened here? Chen, he muttered dumbfounded. Although his words were uttered unconsciously, everyone heard him clearly due to how awfully quiet the atmosphere was. No need to worry. Bai Zemin broke the silence and continued to move forward. No need to worry. Chen, he looked at Bai Zemin's back and wondered if this person had gone crazy. If there was no need to worry about this, then what were they going to worry about? However, another person spoke up just then. Let's continue. It should be fine. Shangguan Bing Shui gently shook her head and also slowly moved forward. This? Chen He did not know what to say. His childhood friend had also gone crazy? Since the world changed, Shangguan Bing Shui's attitude had changed a little compared to his memories, this was something confused for the talented archer. Actually, it wasn't that she had changed, Shangguan Bing Shui was simply adapting to the new world and learning the new rules for survival. Simple as that. Being forced by the fighters who protected both sides of the diamond, Chen He and Liangpeng had no choice but to move forward. As a consequence, all the survivors were forced to walk whether they wanted to or not, after all, they could not survive alone as they lacked the power to do so. My god, what? What is that creepy thing, beetle? How can there be such a big beetle? When the group of more than 20 people arrived at the place where the body of the First Order blazing beetle lay inert, it didn't matter if it was Chen He and Liangpeng or if it was a powerless survivor, they all gasped and took a step back. Seeing the creature's body that was over three meters tall and looked similar to a small flesh building, they were all shocked beyond words. Moreover, when they looked at that mighty horn and its long legs, they all felt as if their hair stood on end just imagining having to face something like that. What other monster could have been able to kill this terrifying beast? Liang Peng couldn't help but slowly reach out and touch the elephant beetle shell only to be surprised to realize that it felt like he was touching cold metal. Apparently, the monster that fought this elephant beetle cut off a large part of its head. Chen, he noticed a large amount of dried blood running down the creature's slashed neck and quickly came to the conclusion. Shangguan Bing Shui simply stood silently as she stared at the giant beetle. Only she knew that the cause of all this was probably the man who was even younger than her and the person who had had the least interaction with the rest of the group. I wonder if the big monster that defeated this First Order beetle is also a monster in bed Lilith joked as she listened to the human's conversation. She would never miss a chance to tease him as she loved his reactions. As for the monster that had ended the life of the First Order blazing beetle, by Zemin, he almost spits out two liters of old blood when he heard the words of the beautiful succubus beside him. This woman really didn't know when to give up. By Zemin secretly gritted his teeth, trying not to imagine wild scenes. Ignoring everyone's gaze and not caring about their comments, he walked towards the head of the giant elephant beetle and jumped approximately three meters with a loud stomp. Seeing this scene everyone was amazed and astonished. A three-meter high jump was something that in the past would be taken as superhuman, but now it was happening before their very eyes. Fu Xiefeng clenched his fists tightly as he secretly vowed to become powerful enough to perform such feats. Kai Jingyi and the other two students also had resolute looks in their eyes, further reinforcing the idea of becoming stronger. Are you sure it's here? Bai Zemin whispered softly as he approached the giant beetle's forehead. Little Zemin, are you doubting the older sister? Lilith folded her arms, emphasizing her already big attributes even more. Cough. Bai Zemin quickly turned his gaze away as he secretly cursed her. Without further ado and under everyone's confused gaze, Bai Zemin wielded the Xin Yuan sword and using the tip easily pierced the beetle's flesh. He cut several centimeters deep until he reached about half a meter before finally stopping. Bai Zemin stuck his right arm in as he put the sword down for a moment and rummaged around before finally pulling his now blood-filled arm back out. However, his attention was on the dark yellow rock the size of a baby's fist in his hands. The rock was not perfect and had many imperfections in it. However, its glow was extremely enchanting. That's a first-order soul, stone fire element. 
Lilith nodded and slowly explained, I had previously overlooked it as it is not valuable to me, but to the current you, it is. Soul stones are used to evolve skills, boost the power of spells cast from the same element, and can even boost treasures as long as you find a person with the blacksmith class and enough ability. In short, soul stones have many other uses that you will slowly learn about. Byzemin's eyes glittered when he heard her words. Such a treasure had almost been overlooked and fortunately Lilith remembered it or else he would have no tears to cry later. The more time passed, the more he realized how valuable the help that Lilith was giving him was. While he could learn all of this on his own as time went by, the truth was that it was an extremely big advantage in the beginning. Without saying a word, Byzemin took out a plastic bag from his backpack and carefully put away the First Order Soul Stone before putting it back into his backpack. Then, he took out an empty bottle and began to draw blood from the beetle. He had not forgotten the requirements to evolve his blood manipulation skill to Second Order. It was so difficult to defeat the First Order Blazing Beetle and his life was close to ending on so many occasions that Byzemin couldn't even imagine defeating nine other similar or more powerful creatures. Worse yet, he also needed to defeat a Second Order monster, one step at a time. One step at a time. Byzemin sighed as he continued his work. While everyone was dumbfounded, Shang Guan Bing Shui's beautiful eyes glittered and without saying a word to anyone, she walked away from the group. Bing Shui? Where are you going? Chen, he called out to her, but was completely ignored. A few seconds later, and just when Bai Zemin had finished filling several bottles of blood just in case, Shang Guan Bing Shui came back walking like an ice goddess. That woman is smart. Lilith praised as she looked at the silver-haired woman. She went back to look for the body of the mutated dog that was frozen to death three days ago to obtain its soul stone. What, those creatures have too? Byzemin was dumbfounded. Not all of them. Lilith shook her head and slowly explained, even evolved creatures don't necessarily form a soul stone. Besides, the value of an unranked creature is far less valuable than a soul stone from an officially evolved creature. But still, it's valuable to you. F asterisk CK its mother. Looks like I should go find the mantis corpse when I get the opportunity. By Zemin's side and after washing his hands with some water he climbed down from the giant beetle's body. Bang. Suddenly a bang sound forced by Zemin to look in that direction and when he saw the scene his face became a little strange. Not only he had that strange reaction, Chen He, the rest of the survivors, and even the cold and indifferent Shang Guan Bing Shui had strange looks plastered on their faces. Lilith looked at the scene with a touch of amusement as well, waiting to see what would happen next. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 32 By Zemin's Strength No one knew exactly how it happened as everyone's attention was completely fixed on the mysterious actions of Byzemin and the disappearance and appearance of Shang Guan Bing Shui. However, at this moment, the little giant Liang Peng was lying on the ground, sitting on his butt while looking at the giant beetle in surprise. What happened? Shang Guan Bing Shui broke the awkward silence and asked, with a small frown. Liang Peng didn't answer her and instead jumped off the ground as he shouted loudly, Damn it. This beetle shell is so hard that even with my strength and hammer I can't break it. Those survivors who were enduring the urge to laugh when they saw Liang Peng on the ground turned pale when they heard this. Liang Peng had been unconsciously considered as the person with the most physical strength in the whole group because of his huge hammer and the ease with which he wielded it. However, as one of the strongest in the group, even he could not break through this beetle's defenses. What did it mean not to be able to break through the enemy's defenses? It meant that in the event of a battle, it was only a matter of time before he would have to retreat in defeat or be killed. Then, if a creature on the level of this giant beetle appeared, Liang Peng might have a chance to flee. However, they were all weak people with average stats, if they were left to their fate it would only be a matter of time before they died miserably. Many young female students could not help but burst into tears again, realizing how dangerous the world was now and how little life was worth. That big man looks like he graduated from a fool's college. Lilith couldn't help but giggle softly as she played with her hair. Byzemin frowned slightly at the growing fear of the survivors. At this rate, all his plans would fly out the window before they were even put into action. After hesitating for a moment, Byzemin slowly walked towards Liang Peng and stretched out his right hand as he calmly said, Can you lend me your hammer for a moment? 
what do you want it for? Liang Peng looked at him suspiciously. His impression of Bai Zemin was not very good at this point after what happened earlier in the gymnasium, just to see if I can break through the beetle's defenses. Don't worry, I'll get it back to you right away. Bai Zemin looked at him seriously and assured him. Liang Peng looked at him as if he was an idiot and was about to say something when suddenly an idea flashed in his mind. With a strange smile, he raised his hammer and handed it to Bai Zemin, here, thank you. Bai Zemin nodded and stretched his hand forward. When Bai Zemin's hand came into contact with the hammer's handle, Liang Peng scoffed and released his grip. However, the scene of Bai Zemin being sent to the ground by the weight of the hammer did not happen, unlike what Liang Peng was imagining in his mind. Ah, uh, look. Bai Zemin can also hold Liang Peng's big hammer. Not only that, he's doing it with one hand. Some people began to whisper softly amidst the sound of sobbing. Chen, he also blinked in surprise at Bai Zemin's physical strength. On the other hand, Shang Guan Bing Shui's blue eyes flashed as if she had finally confirmed her earlier theory. Skull-breaking hammer, normal treasure, a hammer over two meters long created with a metal called Asham. It weighs 300 kilograms and is capable of crushing a medium-sized vehicle with ease if its wielder has enough power to wield it. When equipped, plus 20 strength. The hammer was bright blue in color and while it brought the same amount of strength as by Zemin's Xin Yuan sword, it was obvious from reading the description and seeing the difficulties of lifting the hammer that his sword was superior in every aspect. Bai Zemin took a big step forward as he lifted the hammer with his single healthy hand and, after raising his right arm above his head with the hammer pointing towards the sky, his 85 strength points fully burst out as he smashed with all his power downwards. The weight of the hammer together with Bai Zemin's total strength being equivalent to almost nine normal people before the evolution caused a loud bang as a result of the sudden movement. Boom. After a loud boom and a small shockwave, several students could not help but fall to the ground as they lost their balance when the ground beneath their feet shook from the great weight of the weapon and the force with which it was used. Everyone could not help but suck in a breath of cold air at the thought of what would happen if that strike landed on them. Wouldn't they be crushed into meat paste? Forget about them, even a normal house would collapse. Bai Zemin looked at the cracks in the giant elephant beetle shell and nodded seemingly satisfied. He turned to look at Liang Peng, who was stunned looking at the cracked shell and said, casually, it really is tough. It looks like I can't break it. Here, thanks for your hammer. After picking up the hammer, Liang Peng couldn't help but reach over and touch the place where Bai Zemin had just banged. Crack. Crack. Bang. As if that was all that was necessary, when Liang Peng's hand came in contact with the shell, over 50 centimeters of the shell dropped to the ground, revealing the flesh and bloody cracks inside. This wasn't Bai Zemin supposed to be an evolved agility type? Besides, his strength is even superior to Liang Peng's? Chen He was dumbfounded as he looked at the ground split by the weight of the beetle, the weight of the hammer, and the heavy blow Bai Zemin had just made. Who knows? Even I haven't shown everything yet. Come, an idea occurred to me, Shang Guan Bing Shui shook her head slightly before walking towards Bai Zemin and Liang Peng. I guess everyone hides their own secrets. Chen He nodded. He followed Shang Guan Bing Shui, and as he looked at her back, he couldn't help but think under his breath, although I wish you trusted me enough to not have secrets. Then, Bai Zemin looked at Shang Guan Bing Shui and said with a somewhat surprised tone, You want us to use the beetle meat as food? Shang Guan Bing Shui nodded indifferently and continued, The energy called mana empowers the living beings in the world. Then, it is likely that the giant beetle's meat also contains some remaining mana. I assume that the probabilities that it is beneficial to the human body are high and it is also a good source of food. Apart from the four main leaders, Kai Jimi was also present as she had demonstrated good ideas during the early days of the evolutionary apocalypse. Meanwhile, the other survivors were inside the pharmacy looking for and storing as much medicine and medical utilities simple to move. In this world where unwanted surprises awaited in every corner, it was unlikely that social order would be established soon and the laboratories in charge of producing medicine would not be in operation either. Therefore, it was best to get as much as possible now that they had the opportunity to do so. I think it's a good idea. Chen He agreed without hesitation. Bai Zemin secretly sneered. As Shang Guan Bing Shui suitor, it was natural for Chen He to agree with whatever she said. 
Liangpeng and Kai Jingyi also agreed with her suggestion. Not only could they obtain a source of food, but they could also fortify the body by consuming the monster's meat. After all, the reason for the apocalypse was not a virus, the reason why everything changed was caused by the mana. After some discussion, the five people finally came to the conclusion that they should first secure the surroundings and get some tools to take care of the elephant beetle's flesh, in the meantime, the monster's body could only stay here. No one was worried about the meat suddenly going bad because as an energy booster, the mana was doing a good job. Thirty minutes later, the group left the practically collapsed area and continued advancing in a northwesterly direction. Although there was still medicine left in the pharmacy, there were two survivors carrying two big backpacks each and some plastic bags full of all kinds of medicines. The next point the group was aiming for was a nearby restaurant in search of food, being this place not only the closest but also the one that was relatively less ringed by buildings in comparison, facilitating the vision of the surroundings, mobility, and preventing them from being trapped in case a large group of zombies appeared without warning. Inside a three-story building that used to hold classes in the past, two people were hiding next to the window looking out at the restaurant 50 meters distant. This building that had previously been used to hold classes had now become a hellhole. Blood stains were everywhere, tables and chairs turned carelessly over, doors broken. The whole place was as if a hurricane had swept through it during the night and the only two people alive were these two hidden people. Three days had passed since the last time they had eaten something and finally, hunger was beginning to overcome their sense of fear. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 33 Arrogant and Vicious Chao Long, Part 1 He Yuhan, are you sure you want to do this? asked one of the two surviving students hiding in the building. Su Fen, do we have any other choice? He Yuhan, a tall and fit young man in his twenties replied helplessly. It's been almost 72 hours since I last tasted a bite and my stomach roars as if a monster is hiding inside. If we don't take the risk now to get some food, when our energy runs out it will be difficult to even move a single muscle. Sufin's face was filled with helplessness. When had he ever had to go through such suffering? Going hungry was something he had never expected to happen to him. In the past, if he wanted something to eat, a call to a restaurant or a visit to a food center was all he needed to satiate himself, but now all this had disappeared so abruptly that it was hard to digest it all casually. I knew it. If we had stayed with the group, none of this dash. Don't say any more, Su Fan was muttering some reproachful words when He Yuhan's voice stopped him with a shout that startled him. He Yuhan didn't seem to care if the zombies or some other creature had heard his scream as he looked at his fellow survivor with eyes full of fury as he growled, You want to go back to that place? What for? Do you want to become Chao Long's bitch? Eh? Su Fen's face turned purple when he heard this and his heart filled with regret after remembering everything Chao Long had done during the three days they were in his group. Po. He Yuhan spat on the ground as he cursed, I'd rather starve to death or be eaten by a zombie than stay with that wild dog surnamed Chao. It had only been three days, but his humanity was already eaten by beasts. Hey, look. Look over there. Sufin suddenly interrupted his companion and quickly tugged at his clothes to urge him to look out of the window. With a face full of anger, grief, and helplessness, He Yuhan forced himself to calm down and peeked his head out of the window. However, what he saw shocked him greatly and he could not suck in a breath of cold air. Who? Who are these people? Are they still human or are they ghosts? The group of more than 20 survivors led by Shangguan Bing Shui, Chen He, Liang Peng, and by Zemin finally arrived at the nearby street where the restaurant they aimed for this time was located. The walk was slow due to the survivors' fear so it had been another 10 minutes since they left the place where the first order blazing beetle's corpse lay. How will we do it? Bai Zemin asked casually as he looked at the surrounding 200-plus zombies. It's impossible to avoid a confrontation against them. Chen He surveyed the surroundings before pointing. I think the best idea is to let me lure them out slowly. That way we can annihilate them all much easier after splitting them into smaller groups. Because there were few buildings nearby, the zombies were quite scattered if compared to other places and the odds of being ambushed by a creature were much lower as well. However, the downside was that due to the lack of buildings when one zombie was alerted, the others would also notice the nearby life force and they would start moving in that direction. 
I get your idea though. Wouldn't it be easier if we just move forward and crush them all? Liang Peng couldn't help but point out. Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at him as if he was an idiot, however, she nodded to express her agreement, underestimating the zombies is not good. But I also feel that it would be easier to simply charge in and finish them off with a single strike to avoid attracting too much attention for too long. Anyway, with the strength of our group a few hundred zombies shouldn't be any problem. Although Shang Guan Bing Shui did not agree with Liang Peng's attitude of underestimating the enemy, she also felt that there was no need to give them importance when they did not deserve it. It was precisely for this reason that she accepted the proposal of the man with the hammer. Then let's get it over with. Bai Zemin didn't even wait for the others and charged forward like a whirlwind. In less than three seconds he had already closed a distance of several meters and found himself in front of the first zombie. His right hand shook gently and the Xin Yuan sword flashed with sharp light for a split second. In the next instant, the zombie's head flew up and created a beautiful arc in the sky as red blood spurted out like a fountain. However, Bai Zemin had already left that place a long time ago so he could not even smell the scent of blood, let alone see it. You have acquired level 4 normal zombie soul power. You have acquired level 3 normal zombie soul power. You have acquired level 4 normal zombie soul power. Even after losing his velocity boots during his battle against the First Order Blazing Beetle, Bai Zemin's agility was still far superior to that of a normal person and most evolved people. With 76 agility points and being almost eight times faster than a normal person, Bai Zemin's current speed had reached a point where he could move at approximately 100 km per hour. Unlike most automobiles that needed some time at first to get up to speed, making use of his 85 strength points to push himself with his legs, Bai Zemin could reach a speed of 0, 100 km per hour in just one second. His body flickered through the crowd of zombies at astonishing speeds, while small explosions sounded every time one of his legs stomped the ground to propel himself forward. In less than five seconds, ten zombies had fallen to the ground decapitated and their blood was slowly beginning to accumulate. No matter how many times I see it, that speed is insane. Chen he couldn't help but force a smile as he looked at the ongoing massacre. Was the help of the three of them even necessary here to begin with? Let's go. Shang Guan Bing Shui said indifferently as she took a step forward. Her body moved like an ice butterfly and, although her speed was not as high as Bai Zemin's, she was definitely not slow as even Chen He and Liang Peng were quickly left behind. With a smooth wave of her hand, ten small ice bullets appeared out of nowhere, and with another smooth movement gracefully the ten ice bullets silently pierced the heads of ten zombies almost at the same time. Although Shang Guan Bing Shui might not be as fast or as strong as Bai Zemin since these two stats of hers were lower than his, her crowd-fighting ability was actually much more efficient. While it was true that Bai Zemin was not using his blood manipulation skill, the reality was that Shang Guan Bing Shui's ice bullet penetration ability was much higher. In addition, her control over mana was truly spectacular. Therefore, when she joined the battle she had soon claimed the first place and kill count with Bai Zemin following closely behind. Chen He sighed before drawing three arrows from the quiver on his back and placing them in his bow. With a simple pull and release of the bowstring, the three arrows soared through the skies like dragons and found themselves hitting three different targets at exactly the same time. The next instant, another three arrows shot out and three more zombies fell lifeless with an arrow stuck exactly in the middle of their foreheads. Although his killing speed was not as high in comparison to Shang Guan Bing Shui, it was only slightly lower than the speed at which Bai Zemin without using any skills cleared enemies. Chen He's skill was professional sniper and as long as he had the necessary weapon, even a fly two kilometers away could not escape his shots. Liang Peng snorted and seemed to take the zombie clearing as a competition. With a fierce growl, his body suddenly swelled up and several parts of the clothes he was wearing cracked. Bang! With a mighty stomp that left a crack in the ground beneath his feet, Liang Peng made use of his monstrous strength to boost himself forward and with a ferocious blow, a zombie was smashed to pieces as flesh and blood splattered everywhere. With another heavy stomp, his body moved in a straight line towards the next target. The survivors who had quietly stood by Chen He, who was constantly shooting arrows while Fu Xiefeng hurriedly picked them up, looked at the scene unfolding before their eyes with fervor and hope. 
being part of a group with four such powerful evolved ones and with others rising in the near future, the chances of survival were undoubtedly much higher and the lifestyle they could lead would undoubtedly be a lot better than those without power. Of course, with the new rules in place today, they all knew that they had to work hard to get a better living, but as long as they didn't have to fight a zombie or any other creature, it was okay for them to do any job. That was precisely why these survivors had the courage to go out to carry the food. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 34 Arrogant and Vicious Chao Long, Part 2 After about five minutes, all the zombies, even the farthest one in sight, had been completely annihilated by the group of four. Bai Zemin looked on indifferently as the blood of over 200 zombies had accumulated to form a large pool of blood. Although his expression was casual, several thoughts flickered in his mind as he looked at his own status window. The battle had lasted only a few minutes, but Bai Zemin had consumed five stamina points. While it was true that five points were not much compared to his 180 total points, the reality was that this small scuffle against the zombies had made Bai Zemin realize even more that even if he was strong he had not reached the point of being able to take on an army of inexhaustible creatures that knew neither the meaning of the word fear nor the meaning of the word pain. A few hundred zombies was fine, but if there were several thousand of them, then even by Zemin himself would have no choice but to retreat before his stamina was completely consumed, or else he would end up becoming zombie food. Liang Peng was panting slightly, obviously his stamina stats were not particularly high, and he had probably consumed even more than by Zemin, whose body had evolved steadily and more evenly. Chen, he was picking up some arrows while rubbing his fingers softly, seemingly numb. Moreover, his chest was rising and falling smoothly, even if he hadn't had to run all over the place, the optimal concentration he had to exert to shoot three arrows at the same time with total accuracy was not a simple thing and the pressure was immense for him. As for Shangguan being Shui, she was as indifferent as ever and it was simply impossible to know what was going through her mind. Soon, the group of survivors entered the restaurant and began to inspect what they could and could not take. As they passed by the blood-filled corpses, the smell of iron assaulted their nostrils and many of them had to be supported by others in order to move forward as their legs had softened to the point where they could fall to the ground at any moment. What do we do? Su Fen whispered quietly as he looked out the window of the small building. He Yuhan was silent for more than a minute before finally saying somewhat hesitantly, I think we should try to contact them. What? And what if they also end up being just like Chao Long and abuse of their power? Sufin didn't seem very willing. Although he had previously asked what to do, he actually hoped not to have to leave this place. Fear and the things he had seen over the past week had turned Sufin into a frightened person who would rather starve to death than take the slightest risk. He Yuhan also hesitated a little when he heard this. However, he shook his head and said resolutely, No, I don't think they are the same as that bitch surnamed Chiao. The president of the student association Shangguan Bing Shui was with them and she is known for her impartiality. Besides, as a woman, she definitely won't allow such atrocious acts like Chao Long committed to happen before her. Su Fen could not help but nod. He had also recognized Shangguan Bing Shui among the survivors, she was an extremely strong and capable fighter with the ability to create ice at will and control it as if it was something she had been doing all her life. Considering that Shangguan Bing Shui was known to be extremely righteous in her decisions in the past, Su Fen believed that she would not turn into a beast with human skin so soon. Besides, if we don't go with them, we'll die like starving dogs here. Worse yet, a zombie might appear at night and eat us without us noticing. He Yuhan shook his head and slowly stood up, fighting the dizziness that struck him as a result of not having eaten anything for three whole days. Seeing him walk towards the door, Sufan gritted his teeth before standing up and following closely behind. The group of more than 20 survivors found plenty of food in the restaurant. The only unfortunate thing was that most of the food was not durable as canned food was not particularly popular here. Even so, over 30 kg of rice, noodles, flour, and other miscellaneous items were found that did not need any particular care except to be kept away from moisture. This type of food could last a long time without too much specific care, which was a good thing. 
Apart from plain food, they also found white meat and red meat, but because the gymnasium's refrigerator was not particularly large, they could only take a few kilos before they had to leave the rest there since defrosted meat would not last long before going bad anyway. After filling approximately 60 backpacks with all kinds of food and drink, the group that had found enough food to feed a hundred people for at least another two weeks was about to leave when two people came into view. Other survivors? Chen, he was surprised and moved forward. However, before he could go too far, Shang Guan Bing Shui stopped him and gestured for him to stay in his place. She looked at the two people cautiously and asked, My name is Shang Guan Bing Shui, may I know who you are? S.H. Shang Guan President. And my name is He Yu Han, a third year student. He Yu Han could not help but stammer nervously before introducing himself. However, the other young man did not introduce himself and instead stared dazedly at Shang Guan Bing Shui with wide eyes. What a beautiful woman! Su Fen had never had the opportunity to see Shang Guan Bing Shui up close, and this was the first time such an opportunity had come his way. However, when he saw how beautiful she was, he could not help but be stupefied to the point where his brain seemed to have stopped working. Her cold face was like that of an ice angel, and the curves of her body were so lovely that even her dress could not fully cover them. Sufan felt all the lack of energy he felt before disappeared just by seeing her. Shang Guan Bing Shui couldn't help but furrow her eyebrows slightly, and a look of disgust flashed in her eyes. Although she was already used to such looks, such impudence to stare at her undisguisedly was still unbearable. Hey, didn't anyone teach you politeness? A cold voice snapped Su Fen out of his daze, and he was startled when he saw Chen He staring at him with icy coldness. Bai Zemin secretly raised an eyebrow. To think that this handsome and kind guy was actually capable of speaking in that tone and giving that kind of look. Interesting, he thought. I, I am sorry. Su Fen blushed fiercely and quickly apologized before introducing himself. The atmosphere became extremely awkward after what happened earlier and after the introduction of the two newcomers, everyone fell silent. So, Bai Zemin broke the silence as he looked at the two men around his own age and questioned, what do you guys want? Join our group? He Yu Han's eyes lit up and he nodded hurriedly, that's right. We would like to join your group. Although we can't fight, doing jobs like carrying food should be easy. He Yu Han was a smart guy. Previously, he had seen how the survivors worked with the food while the four fighters and three other people did nothing, therefore, he had come to the conclusion that this was a group with certain tactical rules. That's good. Bai Zemin nodded with a small smile. As long as you are not leeches, you guys are welcome. Even if they are leeches, we can't just let them die casually. Shang Guan Bing Shui pointed out. Bai Zemin looked at her briefly before saying lightly, well, you'll have to give them some of your food in that case. Personally, I am not anyone's father here. This group was formed to survive and live better, not to drag burdens. Aren't your words a bit rude? Chen, he couldn't help but frown. To him, Shang Guan Bing Shui was the most important person in the world, even more than his family. Therefore, he always cared about everything related to her. He <laughs> he. Bai Zemin chuckled before looking at him with a touch of sympathy as he said, let me see how far you go with your kind-hearted mentality. When your kindness and hesitation become an obstacle, your life will not be the only thing in danger. Saying that, Bai Zemin's gaze momentarily paused on the silver-haired woman before turning his attention away from this pair of strange friends. Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at Chen He and then looked at Bai Zemin who looked casual. She sighed in her heart. While it was true that Bai Zemin's words were not pleasant to listen to and Chen he was helping her, the reality was that in this new world Bai Zemin's words were far more logical. Moreover, while Chen He's personality was almost perfect, this was in the world before the soul record came to this planet, in this new era, such a personality would only attract troubles. It was just that for her it was not simple to abandon people. She was raised in a very powerful government family, and Shang Guan Bing Shui felt it was her responsibility to protect others when in fact it was not. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 35 Arrogant and Vicious Chao Long, Part 3 Last While He Yuhan and Su Fen looked at the people who were apparently the leaders, upon more careful observation they realized that the union of this group was not particularly good. 
In fact, He Yuhan had suddenly noticed that except for Shang Guan Bing Shui and Shen He, both famous people on campus, the guy with the sword whose name was unknown to them and the leader of the team in charge of maintaining guard Liang Peng were not particularly close to any person present. Bai Zemin did not bother too much with useless introductions. While these people claimed to be able to do some jobs without danger, what he lacked most now were fighters. As for the matter of Chen He, he didn't even think about it for a second before forgetting that. Shang Guan Bing Shui saw that Chen He's expression had turned a little ugly. As for Bai Zemin's expression. He was so indifferent that he seemed to be competing with her. Not wanting the group to have more problems than they already had, she looked at the two foreigners and asked, suspiciously, You two, would you mind telling me how you were able to survive for a whole week? Not only are you not evolved people who absorbed soul power from the soul record, neither are there any particularly safe places here to casually rest for six days without food. Bai Zemin's ears twitched softly upon hearing this and he focused his attention on the two people again. If it wasn't for Shang Guan Bing Shui's sharp mind, he really wouldn't have cared about something as small as that, but now he really was curious. Besides, he was still hoping to get information about the person who had conspired against him three days ago. While Bai Zemin was recovering from his most severe wounds, Lilith had told him that a man who did not belong to the group he was part of had lured many zombies to surround him after he finished his battle to the death against the First Order Blazing Beetle. Back then, if not for Shang Guan Bing Shui's timely appearance, Bai Zemin might have actually died in that place. It was precisely for this reason that his attitude towards her had become slightly more tolerant as he knew he was in debt. Bai Zemin was always a person who remembered favors. But he also remembered enmities. In the past, a person close to him betrayed him in the cruelest way. As revenge, when Bai Zemin recovered from his depression, he secretly sneaked into that person's bedroom and broke his legs as well as his arms with a metal pipe during the night. How could he forget about someone who intended to turn him into zombie food? Although Bai Zemin did not expect to find such a person from the mouths of these people, pleasant surprises still happened even in hell. He Yuhan's eyes flashed with anger, reproach, sadness, and many complex emotions when he heard Shang Guan Bing Shui's question. In a low voice, he began to narrate the events that he and Su Fen had witnessed the first few days that the world changed. Before everything became chaotic, He Yu Han was escorting his girlfriend back to the women's dormitory after they had been together most of the day when the storm broke out without warning. Not long after, He Yu Han felt as if he had been punched in the stomach, forcing him to stop his steps in his tracks as he knelt on the ground. The pain only lasted a few seconds, however, when he looked to his side, he was shocked and startled to realize that his pretty girlfriend was standing under the rain in a daze. He Yuhan tried to call out to her, but when he saw her dying white eyes he was so frightened that he couldn't help but turn away. It was then that chaos erupted. Being the closest building, He Yuhan ran to the female dormitory and locked himself in a room before sealing the entrance with anything useful. A day later, the door was broken down by a good-looking strong-muscled man named Xiao Long. Xiao Long was a person who had trained hard in some kind of martial arts since childhood so he somehow managed to kill several zombies, absorb soul power, and evolve. However, his lucky break came when he encountered two high-level mutated dogs seriously injured after fighting each other, taking the opportunity, Xiao Long killed both mutated dogs and directly evolved to level 15. However, Chiao Long was actually a cruel snake who hid his fangs behind his facade of a handsome man. After gaining power, he understood and accepted very quickly that the world and the rules of the past were no longer valid, the only valid rule in this new world was that all rules were written by whoever had the strongest fist. Having understood the whole situation, Chiao Long showed outstanding adaptability. However, he also unleashed all his darkest desires without caring about anything but enjoying the new life. Within his group, Chiao Long had forced everyone to call him king. As king, Chiao Long naturally had his own harem which was composed of a total of eight beautiful female students and two beautiful female teachers. Among these ten women, only four of them were happy as they could eat the best food and have the backing of someone strong, but the other six were unwilling. Unfortunately, these women were weak and Xiao Long simply forced himself on them. Xiao Long not only forced the women to serve him, but also ate the best food and enjoyed the best treatment available within the group of survivors he had rescued. 
This had naturally aroused the discontent of many people, for which a group consisting of five hot-blooded students stood up to confront him. Too bad, these warm-blooded students were just normal people. How could five normal human beings even compare to Chao Long, who was not only versed in martial arts, but had even absorbed a vast amount of soul power higher than his own? Xiao Long broke the legs of the five male students and threw them into a group of zombies while laughing loudly as he watched them crawl with their hands and the slow zombies chased after them at similar speeds. In the end, due to the zombies' infinite stamina, the five students were eaten alive when they exhausted all their strength. After this event, no one dared to oppose Xiao Long anymore and he has been living a life of debauchery and uncontrolled while the rest were living the life of cats and dogs. After finishing narrating the story, He Yuhan explained that the reason why he and Su Fen managed to flee was because three days ago Xiao Long had returned frightened for some reason and vented all his fear having physical relations with several of his imperial concubines. Making use of this opportunity, they both fled during the night. When the group of survivors heard about Xiao Long's actions most of them could not help but suck in a breath of cold air. The women shuddered in terror at the thought of leading a life worse than death and their eyes were filled with pain at the suffering those people were experiencing. He Yuhan's words also served to make everyone realize how fortunate they were. After all, while the group had its own problems, at least everyone was relatively decent and the four strongest leaders kept their sanity seemingly intact, even the lecherous Liangpeng had not forced anyone to do anything obscene. Suddenly, the temperature of the place seemed to drop several degrees all at once and the survivors could not help but recoil as they looked at the beautiful and usually indifferent Shangguan Bing Shui with surprise and trepidation. Even Bai Zemin, Chen He, and Liang Peng had to move several steps away as they looked at her with different reactions. A part of the ground under her feet had frozen completely while her eyes seemed to burn with fire as she looked at He Yuhan. Very slowly, she uttered word by word, You. Lead me to the place where Chao Long is. Her voice was as cold as millennial ice that had been cut off from all warmth and seemed to have forgotten all about emotions. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 36 Bone Chilling Coldness. In a building north of the university campus, fourth floor, this place was previously used as an important meeting room by the teachers and directors of the university, therefore, the decoration was quite elegant, the glass windows were almost two meters high, which provided a beautiful view from the fourth floor to the outside. However, while the view was beautiful, the danger was also high because in this new world such a place without any protection was definitely not a good place to stay too long. A young man of about 21 or 22 whose face was quite handsome and whose body was very fit was sitting in a leather chair while drinking a glass of whiskey. While students was not hard allowed to drink alcohol on the university grounds regardless of their age, the teachers had their own stocks so it was not easy for him to find several bottles. On the young man's lap was a beautiful female student about the same age as him. This young woman smiled every time the young man said something and was clearly trying to curry favor with him in any way possible. This young man was Chao Long. That little dog, Su Min, sure, is arrogant. Chao Long spat as he clung tightly to the woman's slender waist in his embrace. Does he think that just because he's a teacher he can give me orders? Let's see if now that I've broken his legs, he'll learn to be more careful next time. The girl in his embrace shuddered imperceptibly at his words. With a flattering smile, she kissed him and praised, King Chiao, why bother with little flies? Who doesn't know that your power is the only reason we are still alive? Ha ha ha. My little Xiao Xiao is still the best. Xiao Long laughed approvingly before giving the beauty a deep kiss. He loved the feeling of dominating the life and death of others. Even the women he had slept with had to call him king or else they would have to suffer his anger. The girl's name was Xiao Xiao and she was a fourth-year student. She was one of the few women who was willing to give herself to Chao Long of her own free will, she just wanted to survive and lead a better life. Moreover, although she was scared of Chao Long and his wild acts, Xiao Xiao had also become accustomed to giving orders and looking down on others with arrogance after only six days of apocalypse. Bang! The office door was opened with a bang and one of Chao Long's cronies walked in with a pale face as he urgently shouted, King, those two little bitches Su Fan and He Yuhan are back. Xiao Long was about to curse this student for interrupting his moment of happiness, however, when he heard his words, his eyes flashed viciously. Those two puny ants finally couldn't stand the hunger? 
just wait until I get my hands on them and let me watch them run away again. Xiao Long gently pushed the woman he was about to have a good time with and stood up as he walked to the exit. The student buddy was surprised and quickly followed him as he hurriedly said, King, those two puny ants are not alone. There is a group of survivors of about 20 or 30 people and among them is the number one beauty of our university. Xiao Long's footsteps stopped abruptly and he looked at the student with red eyes, is that right? The student naturally understood the meaning behind that question. After so many days of seeing Xiao Long's arrogant and confident attitude, the student knew that he was not afraid of crowds. It's really her. I saw her with my own eyes. Shang Guan Bing Shui was together with that pretty face Chen He and two other guys I don't know. A huge smile appeared on Xiao Long's face and he walked out taking long strides as he daydreamed about delighting with the body of the arrogant woman that countless men were dreaming about, even teachers were secretly looking at the beauty Shang Guan Bing Shui. As for Chen He and the other two strangers, Xiao Long ignored them completely. Chen He came from a powerful family, this was something that everyone knew well and it was also for this reason that no one dared to touch Shang Guan Bing Shui, thinking that he was her safeguard. However, few knew that she never trusted the protection of anyone but herself. But what good did it do to have a powerful family now? Weren't they all in the same situation? Xiao Long was confident that as long as he did not meet that monster who killed the beetle, there was no one capable of defeating him in this university. However, that guy should be dead or at least seriously injured right now. Xiao Long thought as he headed for the exit of the building. That night three days ago, Xiao Long was terrified when he saw the giant elephant beetle, his whole being was screaming to run away and not to appear before that creature. However, to Xiao Long's surprise and horror, one person actually dared to face that beetle and actually emerged victorious. Xiao Long did not even dare to think about what would happen if that person appeared before him one day as his enemy. Therefore, taking the opportunity of the fact that this person was injured after defeating the elephant beetle, Xiao Long attracted a large number of zombies to surround such a person. In fact, Xiao Long was so scared at that time that he did not even dare to approach and left after attracting more than a hundred infected undead. But Xiao Long did not believe that that unknown person would have survived and even if he survived his injuries should be critical considering that fierce battle in the middle of the storm. Bai Zemin and the rest of the survivors advanced under He Yuhan's guidance. Although He Yuhan was scared and did not want to see Xiao Long again for the rest of his life if possible, under the death stare Shang Guan Bing Shui was giving him he did not dare to say no and could only lead the way obediently. Bing Shui, why don't you calm down a moment? Chen He walked beside his best friend and at the same time the only woman he had ever loved, trying to appease her with a soft voice. Unfortunately, all his efforts failed miserably. Shang Guan Bing Shui's gaze was fixed on the road before her and every time a zombie dared to appear in her vision it was miserably slaughtered even before it could growl twice. Bai Zemin was quite surprised. Although in the past he was indifferent to everyone and did not pay attention to anyone in particular, the reality was that it was impossible not to know Shang Guan Bing Shui unless one was not a student or teacher of this university. However, that cold and indifferent Shang Guan Bing Shui from the rumors and whom he had known for a week seemed to have disappeared at this moment. While she was still cold, that elegant coldness had disappeared and been replaced by deadly coldness that no one would be willing to get too close to. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 37 Having Power But Being Held Back by Her Own Allies Sensing Shang Guan Bing Shui's extremely bad mood, none of the survivors dared to say a word and continued carrying the heavy backpacks and bags full of food and drink. It's here. Hesitantly, He Yuhan pointed to a four-story building one street away and everyone stopped after hearing his words. Under everyone's watchful eyes, Shang Guan Bing Shui nodded indifferently and slowly walked forward with Chen He following close behind. Liang Peng also followed a little behind. After all, as a member of this group, Shang Guan Bing Shui was an important asset and Liang Peng was not willing to see her die as it would mean his own life would be harder from then on. As for Bai Zemin, he mingled among the survivors and in a low voice that no one could hear, he whispered, Hey, Lilith. Is this the guy who tried to kill me three days ago? Indeed, he's the one who attracted that crowd of zombies. Lilith nodded with a casual smile as she floated several meters above the ground. With eyes full of curiosity, she looked at Bai Zemin and asked, What will you do? Just wait and see. 
by Zemin replied indifferently. However, his eyes flashed with a hint of coldness imperceptible to the naked eye. You dare to try to kill me using the zombies? I will show you the consequences of having failed then. Oh. It's really you, Shangguan Bing Shui. Xiao Long exclaimed ecstatically as he opened his arms wide. His eyes glittered with naked desire as he gazed at the curves of the beautiful woman before him. Shangguan Bing Shui was undoubtedly the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his entire life. Only such a woman was truly worthy of being his queen. You are Chao Long, the leader of this group who calls himself king. Shangguan Bing Shui's voice was bone chilling as she looked at him coldly. That's right. Xiao Long did not contradict and confirmed as he nodded. He inspected first Chen He and then Liang Peng before saying, I see that you are also good fighters, how about joining this king? I can promise you the best treatment and the best looking women. Above all and only below one, me, Chen, he looked at him as if he was an idiot. This person surely lost his brain just like the zombies. Liang Peng seemed tempted by the offer when he heard the word women, but finally sighed as he muttered what a pity over and over again. Shangguan Bing Shui was clearly not in the mood to listen any nonsense. She waved her right hand gently and two ice pikes appeared floating above her head before shooting out towards Chao Long's arms, she clearly intended to disable him immediately. Since you won't agree to be mine for good, then I'll make you my personal bitch when I get my hands on you. Xiao Long snorted in response. He was already expecting things not to go his way so he was secretly on his guard. Break. Xiao Long shouted and punched a fist forward. Bang. Xiao Long's punch seemed to be strong enough to make the air in front of him bang noisily. As if an air cannon had formed after that blow, Shangguan Bing Shui's two ice pikes were shattered by the strong pressure. With a stomp, Xiao Long's body shot forward at full speed while staring at Shangguan Bing Shui and having identified her as a ranged fighter. Shangguan Bing Shui's expression remained unchanged. With a wave of her hand, ten ice pikes appeared above her head and shot towards the enemy. Seeing the ten ice pikes approaching at full speed, Xiao Long's face changed slightly and he was forced to jump to the side. He had barely rolled on the ground and dodged three pikes when the other seven changed course and continued to pursue him. In response, Xiao Long clenched both fists and launched a flurry of punches forward. Bang, 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 bang. In a moment, the seven ice pikes were crushed into tiny pieces of ice that fell powerlessly on the ground. In retaliation, Xiao Long clenched both fists and fiercely punched forward while glaring at Chen, He and Liang Peng. The air blasted noisily and two air cannons shot out toward the two men who apparently had no intention of participating. The two men were stupefied. Neither of them expected that this person would suddenly attack them when he was fighting another person. Shangguan Bing Shui's face finally had a slight change upon seeing this. Without delay, she waved both hands and two thin walls of ice appeared in front of the two men. Bang, bang, the two thin walls of ice were crushed by the force of the air cannon, but they managed to stop the sneak attack successfully. Unfortunately, Shangguan Bing Shui had spent a lot of mana to create those two ice walls, after all, her ice maker skill was a first order skill and she did not have perfect control over it. He he he. Xiao Long laughed and charged forward as he took the opportunity of lack of attacks. Damn bastard. Chen He blushed in embarrassment and couldn't help but curse. If it wasn't for Shangguan Bing Shui he might have been seriously injured or even killed by the previous attack. But worst of all was that, because of him she had to face incoming troubles. With swift and expert movements, Chen He pulled out three arrows from the quiver on his back and with fiery anger shot the three arrows towards Xiao Long. Are you still trying to be soft? You trash. Xiao Long looked at Chen He and sneered. With a strong punch, the three arrows aimed at his limbs were easily torn apart. Shangguan Bing Shui crafted twenty ice bullets and shot them all forward at the same time. She no longer seemed to care about her enemy's life as many attacks targeted areas like the head and heart. Xiao Long also noticed the change in the pattern of enemy attacks and immediately realized that, to his frustration, he was actually weaker than her. With no other choice, he was forced to change his strategy. While Shang Guan Bing Shui thought that Xiao Long would continue charging towards her, he suddenly turned his body and charged towards Chen He, who was still shocked by the ease with which his attack was crushed. Chen He, watch out. 
Shangguan Bing Shui couldn't help but exclaim as she built up a wall of ice in front of him. Ha 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 ha. You fall little beauty Chao Long laughed out loud like a lunatic whose plan succeeded. A whirlwind of wind appeared under his feet and his speed soared to new heights. Under everyone's dumbfounded gaze, Chao Long dashed toward Shangguan Bing Shui once again. However, she had no time to create more attacks this time since she was still dazed by what had just happened. Powerless, she could only watch as his hand stretched forward in an attempt to catch her. How dare you, you damn brat, an enraged roar sounded from the side followed by a loud pressure. Xiao Long's face turned pale when he saw a huge hammer just a meter away from his head. If that blow reached him, forget about being seriously injured, his head would undoubtedly explode into several hundred pieces. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 38 Killing Without Remorse, Part 1 Surprisingly, instead of backing away, Chao Long gritted his teeth and punched his fist forward. Boom! A powerful air cannon collided with a huge hammer, stopping the attack and giving Chao Long time to retreat and change direction. At the same time, Liang Peng's timely interruption ended up buying Shang Guan Bing Shui the necessary time. Among the crowd of survivors, Bai Zemin looked at everything coolly. What a surprise! Lilith's voice sounded beside him. To think that human actually has a skill as strong as your blood manipulation. No. His skill is weaker. Baizemin shook his head softly and replied in a whisper. Good. It's true that in advanced stages your skill is stronger. But how do you know? Lilith looked at him with a raised eyebrow, waiting for his answer. Instinct. Baizemin smiled slightly. Bah. Lilith rolled her eyes. Xiao Long was really strong. Although not as much as Shang Guan Bing Shui, he was powerful. His skill had already been discovered by Bai Zemin and was indeed very strong, however, it was strong in the initial stages, Bai Zemin knew that his blood manipulation skill was going to become extremely horrifying in the future. On the other hand, Xiao Long's skill would only become more and more insignificant in comparison. Why don't you go and finish him off? Lilith was getting a little bored and apparently wanted to see some blood. Although I know I am strong, in my battle against the Blazing Beetle, the reason I survived and emerged victorious was because of my intelligence and not my strength as I was clearly weaker. Baizemin narrowed his eyes and a strange glint flashed deep inside it. Now, we are all in the same group, but in the future, it won't necessarily be like that. Lilith's eyes widened and she looked at him with noticeable surprise as she asked in amazement, You. Are you studying the strength and weaknesses of each of them? Baizemin smiled faintly but did not reply, instead, he focused on the movements of Shang Guan Bing Shui, Chen He, and Liang Peng. Know what you are capable of doing, learn about your enemy, plan, and you will emerge invincible in every battle. This was a proverb that Baizemin had been fond of since he was young. Although he and they were currently allies, Baizemin had already suffered an assassination attempt from a person he did not even know. Baizemin had no desire to be stabbed in the back ever again in his life, once in the past was enough. Better safe than sorry. He whispered to himself. As she looked at Baizemin acting as if he was a computer, Lilith couldn't help but feel even a bit of pity in the midst of her happiness. She was happy that he thought that way since his survival would be much smoother and the probability of him dying would be much lower. However, she also felt pity as he was changing too fast. Compared to that young man she had seen for the first time, that young man who had been scared when he saw his first zombie and even screamed when he saw the level 5 Big B, the current he was a lot more cold and cold-hearted. What skill did he acquire? Lilith was going crazy trying to find out, but she couldn't get to the answer she was looking for. It was simply impossible for him to change so much in just six days. Therefore, he must have acquired a powerful passive skill, but with side effects as a consequence. As Lilith looked at him with complicated emotions, while Baizemin analyzed the movements of each evolved, the battle continued. Shang Guan Bing Shui was clearly stronger, but Xiao Long was extremely cunning and used Chen He's safety to force her to stop her ice attacks and erect defensive walls, which was causing her to expend a large amount of mana. Xiao Long naturally knew that the two of them were friends since they were young, after all, Shang Guan Bing Shui and Chen He were both well known characters before the apocalypse. Therefore, he used this against them. Chen He was strong, but his forte was enraged attacks. 
However, every time he wanted to move away, Chao Long would appear before him at higher speeds than him so he was completely and utterly suppressed. As for Liang Peng, although he possessed the power to threaten Chao Long's life, his agility was simply too low to catch up with him. Therefore, Liang Peng stood beside Shang Wan Bing Shui without allowing Chao Long a chance to get close. Bai Zemin, what are you doing? You still don't plan to move? Shang Guan Bing Shui finally couldn't help but get frustrated and shouted out loud while looking back. She really intended to kill Chao Long, but he was like a slippery cockroach running around. As if that wasn't enough, she had exhausted almost all of her mana protecting Chen, he and her mood had turned extremely ugly at this moment. Xiao Long's face changed when he heard Shang Guan Bing Shui's words and he hurriedly retreated while making use of two air cannons under his feet. Currently, he was already in huge trouble, if another evolved appeared then it was likely that he would have no choice but to retreat. Sure. I just thought you wanted to do it by yourself. Bai Zemin walked out with casual steps as he looked at Xiao Long with a smile that wasn't a smile. It's you. When Xiao Long saw him, his pupils contracted to the size of a needle and he couldn't help but gasp. In fact, he was shocked to the point where he couldn't help but yell out. Although it was dark that night and Xiao Long had not been able to make out Bai Zemin's appearance, the black coat and the sword in his hand were something Xiao Long would never forget no matter what. I'm glad you remember me. Bai Zemin nodded with a smile, as if greeting an old friend. Since Xiao Long wasn't playing dumb, it was easier for him to not have to beat around the bush. You know this scumbag? Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at Bai Zemin cautiously and walked away from him. Bai Zemin looked at her and instead of answering, he asked, that stormy night three days ago, the reason those zombies surrounded me was because of him. Do you think I know him or not? At first, she was surprised. However, she soon let out a small sigh of relief. Since Xiao Long had planned to kill him, that meant they were not friends, if Bai Zemin and Xiao Long were friends and joined forces, then things would be difficult. Bang! Xiao Long's face turned pale and without even a moment's hesitation, he turned around to flee. The ground under his feet cracked slightly due to the air cannons and he sped away. The people in Xiao Long's group were shocked to the point of not being able to believe what they were seeing. He, who was arrogant as hell and called himself king, was actually running away like a cowardly chicken. But how could Bai Zemin allow him to come and go at will? Where do you think you are going? Suddenly, Xiao Long's footsteps stopped abruptly. A moment later, he spat out a mouthful of fresh blood and knelt on the ground while clutching his stomach growling lowly. Bai Zemin approached step by step and without haste. At this point, he didn't mind showing off a bit of his main skill. Anyway, it was unlikely that anyone would be able to identify it with such little testing. Arriving next to Chao Long, Bai Zemin squatted down and with his healthy hand grabbed him by the hair, forcing his head up and to look directly into his eyes. Ugh. Xiao Long couldn't help but grimace in pain. However, when he looked into Bai Zemin's eyes, he was so startled that for a moment he forgot the pain he was feeling. Shang Guan Bing Shui's eyes were cold by nature and it was as if all her life she had had that frozen gaze with no sign of emotion. But the coldness emanating from Bai Zemin's gaze was brimming with a cruelty that seemed to come from every fiber of his being. A little bird told me that you like to play with zombies? Sounds interesting. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 39, Killing Without Remorse, Part 2 Last A little bird told me that you like to play with zombies? Sounds interesting. Hearing the words that Bai Zemin had just spoken, the crowd of people inside the building who were silently observing the battle and the survivors who were guided by He Yuhan could not help but gasp. What did Bai Zemin mean by play with zombies? Of course they all understood. How could they not understand the intention behind those words? After all, while the group of survivors led by Chao Long had seen him throw live people to the zombies, the group led by Bai Zemin and the others had heard the story of the events less than an hour ago. Chen He's face turned a little ugly when he heard this. Even now he couldn't just casually go and kill a person. Being raised in a family with a military background, Chen He always believed and still now did believe that criminals should face the law. This person is crazy? He's joking, isn't he? Chen He asked dumbfounded. Who knows? Shang Guan Bing Shui replied absently and without much interest. Currently, her thoughts were on something else. What happened just now? 
Why did Xiao Long, who was acting all powerful just a moment ago, suddenly become as weak as an insect and coughed up a mouthful of blood? Shang Guan Bing Shui was trying to find answers to these questions while looking at Bai Zemin with eyes filled with doubt. Bing Shui, are you okay with this? Your family won't accept it either if they find out. Considering how many witnesses there are here. Chen He hesitated for a moment before pointing. From his point of view, while it was true that the world had changed, it was impossible that the army could not defeat the zombies considering how slow they were. It was only a matter of time before everything regained a certain level of normalcy, and even if the world could no longer return to the way it was, it was only natural to Chen He that the laws would be enforced. Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at him a little exasperated. She knew that Chen He was saying those words to stop Bai Zemin out of kindness, but that kindness in this world without rules was somewhat annoying. Then you want me to kill him? She asked casually, as if killing a person was not difficult at all. With my family backing me up, even if I kill him in front of so many people it should be fine. What? That's not what I meant and you know it. Chen, he couldn't help but look at her as if she was crazy. Anyway, that scum will die in one way or another. Shang Guan Bing Shui shook her head before looking at Xiao Long with disgust and hatred. Such a scum of a man. That's why they shouldn't exist to begin with. Chen, he was slightly dumbfounded as he heard her final words. In the end, he could only sigh as his eyes flashed with complex emotions. On the other hand, while the survivors were looking at him with terror and while Chen He and Shang Guan Bing Shui had different thoughts about the current situation, Bai Zemin was dragging Chao Long on the ground as if he was a broken rag. Let me go, you f asterisk king bastard. Chao Long roared furiously and tried to activate his skill to free himself. However, cough. Xiao Long felt all his internal organs clench, it was as if they were about to break into pieces. In the end, he couldn't help but cough out a mouthful of blood for the second time. What? What's going on? Xiao Long was scared. The pain was so great that it was about to become unbearable. You can't activate your air manipulation skill, right? Bai Zemin questioned indifferently as he continued to drag Xiao Long on the ground. Bai Zemin's hand was like a pair of unbreakable iron pincers that clung tightly to Chao Long's head unwilling to let go. What? How do you know the name of my skill? Chao Long looked at him as if he was looking at a ghost in broad daylight. Hmm. About that. Bai Zemin replied unhurriedly as he stopped and smiled slightly at the group of ten zombies slowly approaching. Due to the sound of the previous battle, some creatures were attracted so Bai Zemin hadn't even walked 30 meters before a group of zombies came into view. While you were fighting before I noticed that you were trying to hide your skill by using your fists. Bai Zemin explained as he released his grip on Xiao Long. Xiao Long wanted to take the opportunity to run away, but before he could react, Bai Zemin had already struck with his right leg. Arg. You damn bastard. I'll kill you. I swear to God, I'll kill you. Xiao Long cried out in pain as he felt the bones in his leg breaking into pieces. His eyes widened as he glared at Bai Zemin as a bloodthirsty demon. Bai Zemin did not even react to his threat and kicked his other leg again with all his strength. The bones of Xiao Long's other leg were also crushed into countless pieces and his sharp cry of pain echoed everywhere. As I was telling you before. Bai Zemin looked at him with a smile and explained, although you were hiding your skill well, you made a very big mistake when you boosted your speed. That's when I realized that your skill was similar to mine. Bai Zemin ignored the look of hatred, fear, and surprise on Xiao Long's face. Instead, he looked at Lilith with a smile and said casually, you see? Even if there is air in the entire atmosphere and this trash of skill is stronger than my blood manipulation at the beginning, what good is it if he can't activate it? You. Lilith looked at him as if he was a monster. Not only was Bai Zemin many times stronger than his actual level, but he did not get carried away by that strength and instead analyzed each situation carefully in detail before stepping forward. This was extremely alarming. Because the higher existences were precisely superior beings to the lower existences, everyone disdained them and gave them no importance. However, Lilith opened her eyes again as she looked at the glint of indifference in Bai Zemin's gaze. Bai Zemin, what skill did you obtain back then? She finally couldn't help but ask. That's a secret for now. He replied as he looked at the zombies approaching step by step. 
You do realize that your behavior isn't normal, right? Lilith frowned a bit worriedly. If I'm not mistaken, this should be the first time you're going to kill a person but your hand didn't even flinch for a second and your gaze doesn't even have a wave in it. Do you think that the past you would act like this? Baizemin was a bit surprised when he heard this and frowned as he realized that Lilith was a bit right. Indeed, he did not feel that he was doing anything wrong nor did he feel fear for what he was about to do. Was this the effect of the stone heart skill? Baizemin analyzed the situation. However, he shook his head gently and replied indifferently, it doesn't matter. This person wanted to kill me and separate me from my loved ones. Therefore, I will kill him. Is it wrong? No. It's not that it's wrong. Lilith didn't know what to answer, was it wrong? Of course it wasn't wrong and she was happy that he understood that. However, her happiness couldn't help but be dampened by the realization that at this point he was beginning to look more like a machine calculating advantages and disadvantages than a human being. From this point of view, the current by Zemin was not much different from the higher existences. Xiao Long screamed in terror when he felt the zombies' closeness and their growls. He tried to activate his air manipulation skill, but all his tries were crushed by the sickening pain he felt every time by Zemin activated his blood manipulation skill. As long as it is for my sake and the sake of my loved ones, even if I have to kill hundreds of people I can kill without remorse. By Zemin said indifferently and slowly walked away while muttering to himself as if to reinforce that thought even more. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse Chapter 40 Differences and Similarities, Part 1 Did not come close to me, you damn creatures. Xiao Long crawled backwards with his hands as he activated his air manipulation skill, demonstrating that the use of his fists earlier was only to hide the true nature of his skill, just as Bai Zemin had said before. Bang! 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 Three air cannons blew off the heads of three zombies and the ground soon became a bloody mess. Immediately afterwards, three other oversized air cannons exploded the heads of three other nearby zombies. However, to Chao Long's horror, when he wanted to create another three air cannons he realized that he had no more mana left. In their previous battle, Shang Guanbing Shui had not been the only one who had consumed a lot of mana, Chao Long was the same. Due to the sharp and dangerous attacks that she was making with the intention of killing him, Xiao Long was forced to push his skill to the maximum possible and unfortunately to him, Shang Guanbing Shui's ice maker skill was his perfect counter as she could create walls of ice to defend against his cannons and ice bullets or ice pikes to keep him away from her. Xiao Long's air manipulation skill allowed him to control the air near him, but unlike Bai Zemin's blood manipulation skill, Xiao Long could not control the air inside people, each skill had its pros and cons. However, both were very powerful. The mana consumption of powerful skills is also much higher than normal. Bai Zemin's voice getting farther and farther away reached Xiao Long's ears. Under his terrified and panicked gaze, a zombie reached forward and grabbed his head before taking a sharp bite on his face. Arg. It hurts. It hurts so much. Another zombie knelt down beside him and bit onto his arm, tearing off a large chunk of flesh in the process. Help me. I'm sorry for what I did before. A third zombie latched onto his other arm and began to eat his hand, tearing off two fingers with a single bite. I'm willing to be your dog. I'll work like a mule to death for you. Xiao Long's desperate screams echoed everywhere causing his voice to bounce between the nearby buildings, creating a great high-pitched echo that shook the eardrums of all those who heard it. Under the care of four zombies, Xiao Long was bitten all over to the point where his body had become a mess of blood and flesh. His screams of pain and agony stopped when one of the zombies bit his throat. The survivors shuddered in fear as they witnessed such a horrific scene with their own eyes. Something that should only happen in movies, novels, or fantasy books was actually happening before them without any censorship and leaving nothing to the imagination. Everyone's gaze was unconsciously directed at Bai Zemin, who was about 20 meters away. However, none of them dared to look at him for more than a few seconds before hurriedly looking away as if they were afraid that he would suddenly throw them into the zombies. Even the teachers inside the building where the group rescued by Chao Long was in the past were looking at Bai Zemin with surprise and trepidation. Who would have thought that this young man could actually be so cruel? 
but the most surprising thing was that his expression was so indifferent as if what he had just done was none of his business. However, there were some people who looked at Xiao Long's death with endless hatred, and when their gazes fell on Bai Zemin's back that hatred turned to gratitude, these people were the women who had suffered from Xiao Long's tyranny. After being abused and objectified for almost a week, these women were willing to do anything to get revenge. Too bad, they were too weak to do anything about it. But Bai Zemin's appearance was similar to the sun rising after such a long time of darkness. How ironic, this guy, who could have been one of the strongest powers of the mankind in the future to fight against the different races, actually ended up dying at the hands of another human less than a week after acquiring his powers, Lilith commented with a casual smile as she watched Xiao Long being slowly devoured. She was obviously already used to such sights. In fact, Xiao Long was destined to be someone great and with his skill air manipulation as his mainstay, as long as he didn't encounter monsters of a higher order, surviving shouldn't be much of a problem for him. That bright destiny vanished that thunderstorm night three days ago when he tried to kill me. Bai Zemin finished as he took a step forward. Swoosh. 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 Swoosh making four slashes at lightning speed, four heads flew through the air right before falling to the ground and rolling a couple of times before finally stopping. Ignoring the approaching zombies, Bai Zemin crouched down next to Chao Long's shattered corpse and couldn't help but frown slightly at the incredibly gruesome and disgusting sight. Suppressing the urge to vomit, he began to rummage through the body before finally finding some interesting things. Hurricane Necklace, rare grade treasure, contains great wind-like elemental power inside. Once a day, it can release a hurricane in a straight line and send nearby targets flying. When equipped, magic plus 10. Draft Bane Dagger, normal grade treasure and easy to conceal and easy to carry dagger, created with a metal called Harbonite. It is harder than steel and lighter than cork. When equipped, strength plus 5. Although there were only two treasures in Xiao Long's body, they were two new items for Bai Zemin. By defeating human powerhouses, it was not only possible to acquire soul power and experience just like with monsters, but also to obtain all the items that the loser had gathered and accumulated. Of course, while it was true that the higher the level of the enemy and the greater the number of treasures they possessed turned a person into a walking treasure trove, the reality was that defeating such beings was also proportionally difficult. Moreover, although the current Bai Zemin had no qualms about killing people, he did not consider himself a mad machine who killed people just to gather a couple of treasures. As long as someone did not obstruct his path, Bai Zemin would not consider that person his enemy and therefore would not attack them either. However, just because Bai Zemin thought that way did not mean that everyone thought that way. There would definitely be people who would hunt humans to take their belongings. Bai Zemin's face suddenly changed, but he soon relaxed. Swoosh. An ice bullet shot out from the distance and accurately hit the head of Chao Long's corpse. Surprisingly, after penetrating the brain, the ice bullet released a terrifying amount of frost that froze practically the entire head in and turned it into an ice cube. Even though that scum's life was over after being devoured by those zombies, he could still become one of them. A light voice sounded a few meters away. Raising his head slightly, Bai Zemin saw Shang Guan Bing Shui approaching. Behind her, Chen He and Liang Peng were looking at him with different emotions, but both shared one thing, a touch of fear and weariness. Clearly what Bai Zemin had just done had shocked the two men too much and his figure had been etched in their minds as someone dangerous. 